Returning to the Western clock, so most of the objects depicted are imported from China, Qing Dynasty China. Some appear to be European objects, such as most prominently the clocks and watches. Um, this is from the first screen. This is from the Met screen. This, if you look at the face, I don't know if you can see from that distance, but um, curiously, given the skill with which this particular artist depicted every other object in the painting, the Roman numerals are not accurate. They're just funnily done. They're not Roman numerals. They're not Chinese characters. They're not Korean characters. Um, the Met screen, however, has beautifully and accurately rendered um, Roman numerals and also, behind the pendulum, A-W-E-E-K. The director, when he saw this screen, said, well, maybe it was a Cartier clock and came with instructions that said, wind it up once a week. And the artist got an a week in there. First screen, detail of a watch, um, a small round watch that's placed uh, inside, uh, encased in a fabric container, a textile container, and suspended from what appears to be a tall coral branch. And in fact, um, Claire Vincent from ESDA was gracious enough to loan a, a watch from the ESDA collection, which actually turns out to be most likely Chinese. It has an inscription under the minute hand that says made in the Qianlong era, that is the 18th century Chinese emperor under whom that practice of collecting and displaying artworks really became systematized. This is a detail from the Philadelphia screen, a wood or some other material painted to look like wood, water uh, brush or brush holder, sorry, um, containing brushes. And this is the quintessential sort of 19th century Korean porcelain. Emphasis on purity of color and form, no sort of um, excessive decoration to distract from that. 18th century Korean vase, um, co comparable contemporaneous to the time of King Chongjo in the 18th century, under whom this Chekori genre first flourished. Blue and white porcelain, but the emphasis is on the whiteness, the background. The brushwork is very calligraphic. Unlike, for example, this tall vase, which is Chinese, Qing Chinese, um, polychrome enameled, in other words, the colors were applied over the clear porcelain glaze, depicting, interestingly, all kinds of treasures, antiques and such, the kinds of objects that you see depicted in the Korean screen. So the Chinese did have this tradition of um, displaying or depicting what's called 100 antiques. Um, however, they appear only on decorative, primarily on decorative arts that didn't develop into a painting tradition the way that it did in Korea. And the emphasis really is on beautiful or exotic objects rather than the combination of books representing learning and antiques representing beauty, which is the case in Korean paintings. And in Korea, the beautiful objects or 100 antiques theme uh, was restricted to paintings, did not appear on decorative arts such as porcelain. The exhibition begins and ends with this piece, and I say begins and ends because the Korean gallery is one room and there's a giant wall that greets you when you enter. So this is the piece that greets you and hopefully it's the piece that you leave with at the end of the exhibition. It's a contemporary work produced by a Korean artist working in Seoul, Shin Young-ok. Um, she made it in 2002. It's a large-scale six-panel collage. So there's three of the smaller sizes and then three of the large size. And it's sort of a fluid modular work, she explained to me, so that uh, it, initially I thought all six may be too large for the Korean gallery, and I thought, well, could I bring just four? And she was amenable to that. She said that you, one could um, choose to display just sets of two, three, four, five, or all six, and the order can be switched if you wished. It is essentially flat work uh, made of paper. She's a fa pa paper and fiber artist. And these, did I lose my pointer? Here we go. These bookcase-like things, objects, are uh, antique printer's trays that, her hus that were discarded because, of course, these are no longer used. And her husband found them on the street and collected them because she sometimes uses found objects. Um, this, this, I believe, was before she conceived of this project. And so and then she painted the edges with these bright colors that were 
reminded her of the colors in the traditional Chekhori screens. Um, and so direct referencing to books, as well as visually, these can also be interpreted as book cases or shelves. And she's created different colored and textured paper to um, create an illusory interior space. And using this very traditional theme, she's infused it with a contemporary concern, the gender issue. Um, the parts of each panel that have the books represent the male space. And these stringy amorphous form represent the female form and female space. The traditional Chekhori screams screens, of course, were commissioned by male patrons and were displayed in male spaces. Um, and then she sort of attached other accessories on the, on the screen um, as well. So a tradition that continues into today, into this incredibly, I mean, of course, there are artists who recreate Chekhori screens faithfully in their original forms, but there are artists also like her who take the theme and uh, infuse it with a very modern and contemporary flair and taste and concerns. Uh, and this work um, then makes one appreciate even more fully or places the the 19th century and 20th century screens in a richer context. Thank you.